Thank you, Acting Speaker. And I rise to speak on the Education and Training Reform Amendment, Early Childhood Employment Powers Bill 2024, and give the, the, a bill that gives effect to the government's commitment to opening 50 new government-owned early learning centres by employing staff and setting the charging fees for parents. Um, this is an announcement that the government uh, made prior to the election, um, together with the making three-year-old kinder available to all children and complementing four-year-old kinder. And it's something, obviously, that um, we need. Um, there's plenty of evidence that tells us that the earlier we start having children um, have the supports around early learning, the better the educational outcomes. But also, it's important because in South West Coast, we do have a childcare desert, and this goes some way to addressing the issues. But I say some way because it is quite concerning that we have you know, this big announcement that gets these parents who are desperate for childcare um, really excited about a solution and the dates that are forthcoming are quite disappointing. But that with said, in Portland we do have the commitment for the facility that will be at South Portland Primary School um, completed by 2026. And, you know, this is a good thing for the parents of Portland because they are absolutely desperate. And I've had many forums uh, of recent times to talk to the parents about what we can do to solve the childcare desert at a local level. And um, I'll talk maybe a bit more about that later on. But for the community of South Portland, you know, even for the teachers who I met with on the day that announcement came through, um, they were really excited because there's only one toilet there for all the teachers, 19 teachers and uh, support staff, um, adults that uh, support that community, it's Portland South School. So the very fact that they're hoping that the childcare centre will provide toilets is a good thing, if nothing else. And of course, you know, it's a terrific announcement, but for the parents, who are needing childcare now, 2026 is a long way away. And um, for the warnable parents who are on the probably never, never list of um, we'll get to you maybe in 2028, I mean, when you look at the children who are born now, they'll actually be starting primary school by then. So it really doesn't help those parents who are struggling with the cost of living as interest rates on mortgages, is, you know, even that one factor, and there's many, many more than that with energy prices, um, energy prices going up um, under the state lab, like, uh, Labor government by 28%, um, the cost of groceries, I, I really do wonder how families are really making ends meet. And, but uh, that's why women are uh, needing to go back to work and parents are desperate for childcare facilities and we just don't have um, enough places in Warrnambool. In my part of uh, the world, South West Coast, um, or in Warrnambool actually, for every child, there's uh, 0.29 places per child available, and we have a 56% female workplace participant participation. So there's 56 women participating in the workforce, but for, there's only 0.29 places for the children to go. Yet that, compared to Melbourne, which is 0.5 um, places per child, has a, a, a participation of females in the workplace of 69.1%. So that figure there shows you that we're very much um, in a, a crisis situation, and, and I feel that in my office most days when pa families are ringing up saying, what are we supposed to do? We can't manage the cost of living uh, without both parents working and we simply can't get childcare. That actually led me to do in the parliament last year, a um, put forward a debate to take place so we could thrash out what we could do here and now. I believe there are regulations without compromising child's safety that we can um, put in place according to the childcare operators in my um, electorate who, um, as long as we can get the federal government to cooperate with the state Labor government, and they're both Labor, so there's probably good reason for the, you'd expect cooperation, that we can make the fees more portable um, and we can find ways that actually work in the regions. And I've raised this already in the parliament before. Where we, there's an example of a, uh, a doctor who has children preschool age and three of the nurses in the clinic. They have the room, they have the space, uh, they are happy to employ someone to help look after their 
uh, group of children, but because it doesn't fit under the regulations and rules of a daycare centre, because it has to be in someone's home rather than you know, their own home rather than somebody else's home. And those sorts of things, if it doesn't compromise the child's safety, don't really make any sense. So it was disappointing that I put forward uh, the motion to ask for a debate to occur so we could thrash this out and put forward those ideas that our communities have put forward. And you heard from the member for, from Euroa just before me and uh, her... Uh, situations that she brought forward about families needing answers now. They have the solutions. We've been listening to our community. And this, whilst this bill will set up early learning centres, it won't actually solve the problem today because I think it's important that we listen to families. And the fact that that debate that I suggested in the, our House was, was uh, denied by the Labor government is, is an absolute disgrace. Um, and this, uh, these early learning centres, um, whilst I... I see the benefit and we, we also agree with um, free three-year-old kinder. They have to actually come with some degree of planning. Now, Labor haven't put forward a plan, so whilst we're building 50 centres, what is the answer? What is the solution for the workforce uh, shortages that we're, we actually already have them in the region and to actually say we're going to have um, more places for children in, in um, for care centres and, and three-year-old kinders, it doesn't actually acknowledge the fact that you can't do that without training. You can't do that without planning. And you can't just say, here's a new centre and, and poach people from other uh, places to actually fill it because it doesn't actually solve the problem. It just shifts the problem around and probably um, distorts the market and, and disrupts the service of the families who may have um, a, a placement but then lose one of the workers. So I really do hope that the government thinks a bit harder and does something, I don't know, magical in the next three years between now and 20... Or two years between now and 2026 because I'm not sure where these workers are going to appear from. Given there's 800 vacancies in the um, childcare workforce today, I'm not sure where the uh, solution is going to come from. And we tried to ask some of these questions in the bill briefing. I mean, they're reasonable questions that um, the government couldn't tell us um, where the money was going to come from to run the services. So the budget, the 2023-24 budget, which included the $921 million to establish the 35 new government-owned um, early learning centres by 2027, it didn't actually cover anything uh, other than the building costs and it doesn't include any forecast operating expenses including wages. Now, on that, the bill actually... Um, as part of the bill, it actually uh, is set up to be able to employ the early learning educators and the, um, the administrators to run the centres and the cooks to, um, to, you know, feed the children. But I'm still confused as to why we need a piece of legislation to do that, because we don't do that for nurses ambulance officers, um, teachers, that's part of the appropriation bill that we pass each year to be able to pay the public um, service. So um, I often think that this is just a way of the government saying, you know, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll shut everyone down by saying we've, we've solved the problem of childcare um, deficits and deserts, like in South West Coast, here's a bill and we can just put out press releases with these announcements. And unless you actually peel back a bit of the detail and see that, like I've said, in Warrnambool, that'll be at least 2020. 2028, when many of the children uh, who are, de are born today or have been born are at school. So, pretty disappointing. I mean, we've seen a million examples of this, and maybe that's an exaggeration, but dozens of examples of this. Um, the, the bill we had in the Parliament last year about uh, giving people the ability to walk in a to a pharmacy and get a treatment for a urinary tract infection. Great concept but still none in South West Coast because there's no protection for the pharmacists. They're not aware of what the rules are because a trial had, hadn't even started or just started when the bill went through. No detail, and very similar here. Great concept, need to fill the desert that we've got of ch for childcare, but without the detail, without understanding where the people are going to come from to fill this beautiful building that we're building in Portland, which hopefully does have toilets for our teachers, the 19 of them sharing one toilet, but... You know, obviously, as a parent myself who had four children and had uh, relied on daycare as a nurse, with sh as a shift worker, every single child of mine was in daycare, it's a, it's a real concern for parents. And, you know, childcare um, is something that is putting enormous pressure on families in a region that already has massive workforce challenges, as are trying to attract people to the area, can't find childcare, can't find houses, 
How on earth is this uh, government proposing that we fix this in this short time frame without the level of detail needed? So um, shout out to all the families who are struggling. I'm, I'm, I'm advocating for you. We're trying to find a solution. I'm trying to get the government to listen and let's have that debate because I know the parents have the solution and uh, we can get some, some solutions.